How to data merge in InDesign. First of all, what is data merge? It is very similar to mail merge. Data merge is a way for you to take data or information and connect it to your design inside of InDesign and produce in bulk customized designs. Your data may be your address book or results from a survey. It doesn't matter. If you have information stored in a spreadsheet that could be saved as a CSV file or a text file, you can connect that to your design and have your design change dynamically based on that information. This is a powerful tool and it isn't too difficult to do. There are five easy steps in creating a data merge inside of InDesign. First of all, you need to create your design inside of InDesign. Second, format your table of data in a spreadsheet and save it as a CSV or as a TXT format. Uh, connect your data file to your design and choose what needs to be replaced. Then you can preview and merge your designs. Now here you can see I've already done that. I've created my design inside of InDesign. It's a two-page a front-back mailer that I want to send out to my clients. And this uh, mailer includes places where I want to replace the name Sterling with the client's name. And you can see I've put it throughout the document in multiple places. As well as I want to address uh, the clients and even change the side color bar to match um, the color of the flashlight up here. There's two color choices, blue and purple. And so what I want to do instead of having to go through and recreate all of these designs uh, for each client, I want to have um, InDesign automate this process or uh, data merge the information so that it can change everything together. So let me show you how to do a basic merge inside of InDesign. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, point out I've created a similar video on how to do data merge inside of Photoshop. And there are a few similarities and a few differences. I will point those out at the end uh, of this video. So let me get back to InDesign. I've created my design. That's step one. Step two, I need to format the table of data uh, inside of a spreadsheet. So I'm going to show you my sample data is right here. Uh, this is a text file. It was created inside of Excel and then uh, saved as inside of Excel as a text file. Now you can see uh, I don't have any capitals in the names up here at the top, and I don't have any spaces. I use an underscore as a space. I find it a lot easier to keep my titles very simple and not have any spaces or special characters inside of it, and I use all lowercase. This makes it easier when you're trying to merge data. Um, uh, InDesign is a little bit more forgiving than Photoshop is, but uh, I still find that it makes fewer errors if you set up your data correctly. So I would like to use all lower cases and no spaces inside of the titles of the names. And you can see here I have first name, last name, city address, city, state, zip, color choice. And then right here I have the at sign image and then the at sign sidebar. So what this is telling InDesign is that we're going to replace this with a, an image file. And now the image file could be a typical image file like a JPEG uh, or a GIF or you could use a Photoshop or an Illustrator or even another InDesign file to create this. In another video, I demonstrate how I set up and how I create this data file for the data merge. But let's go ahead and get back to the data merge. I need to close this out. The document needs to be closed if you're going to merge it. Back inside of InDesign, I want to connect that data file I just showed you with this design. To do that, I go up to Window, go down to Utilities, and I'm going to choose data merge. Now this window pops up, this panel is asking me, or well, it's basically a data merge panel and it's showing me what can be done, but everything's grayed out. What you need to do is read it. It says choose select data source from the panel menu. The panel menu is this little icon right here. And then it says drag fields from the panel frames to the page. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. And then it says to choose to create a merge document from the panel menu. So we're going to use this panel menu a couple of times. I'm going to go ahead and attach my data source by clicking up here and I choose, let me move this so you can see it better, select data source. The window pops up asking me where my data source is and I have my sample data right here and it's saved as a text file. I also have it saved as a CSV. Both file types will work. I'm going to open that. When I do that, it brings in the different uh, labels that I had created inside of that file. Now notice the last two, the ones that had the ampersand or the at sign in front of them, show kind of a mountain or a picture next to it. This is indicating that this is actually an image that's going to be replaced inside of my document. 
So what I want to do now is connect these uh, different categories to my design. So first name right here is going to go where I have first name already created. I'm going to just select it and then I click on this. It has inside of brackets first name. Now you can see it goes outside of my, my design. This is something you have to experiment with to make sure that all the names that you have don't go off the page or don't go outside of your design. But right now I'm going to leave it as is just so you can see how it works. I'm going to do the same thing for here. Now notice how I just highlight it and then I click on the name. There are other ways you could do it. I'm just going to delete it this time and then I'm just going to click and it puts in first name. So that's another way to do it. Now I'm going to make sure I do this for each case where I have the first name. Now I like to make my design before I, I merge the data. That way I, I know that the spacing's right, everything is set up, and it seems to work better for me. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to first name. On the second page where the address is, I need to do the same thing. So I'm going to put in the first name. Now one common mistake is oftentimes people will put these right next to each other. So I have first name and last name. But if there isn't a space actually typed in there, the space won't show up in the address and it'll smoosh everything together. So I'm going to put a space there just to make sure there's a space between the first name and last name. Where street is, I'm going to go ahead and put in the street. City, I'm going to choose city. So you can see it's not too difficult to connect this data to your design. I'm going to go ahead and put in the zip. And now up here it says from and then color real estate. I'm actually going to change this word color and maybe we have two companies. Maybe we have um, a purple and blue. So I'm going to choose color choice here, which inside my survey uh, asked which color um, somebody preferred, blue or purple. So now I have that color choice changing and I have their address, everything changing. I want to change the images now. There's the sidebar. I'm going to go ahead and select my sidebar and change that by dragging this once I have the bar selected and put it over. Now you can see it still shows the frame of my sidebar, but inside, inside brackets, it tells me that it's going to pull the image from the sidebar over here. And I need to change my background image on this first page. So I select my background image, I click on image, I drag it and drop it on here. It gets rid of my image, but it shows me that they're still connected to image. I can preview to see if this is working correctly by simply clicking preview. Now if you get an error at this point, oftentimes it means that your design, uh, your, your table is not laid out correctly or it's, uh, I would go back and always check your data table to make sure everything is right. Usually the error will tell you what the problem is, such as um, a missing image file. Oftentimes a missing image file is that it was miswritten inside of the data table and it cannot find it. Uh, when you are creating your images for this document, one thing that really makes it easier is to create the image inside the same location where you save, save your da data merge file. If you do that, it makes it a lot easier for you to find it. Uh, in the other video where I demonstrate how to create a data, video, a data file, I demonstrate how to do this. So now that we have everything here, we can preview, we click on preview, we can see here it's actually changed everywhere that it had Sterling listed. It has now put in one of the, fir the first name inside my data table. And I can click through and I can see the different documents. Now these are automatically changing. I can scroll down and I can see it's changing down here as well. Changes the color based on the survey results. And so with, within just a few minutes, I've been able to create uh, a number of different designs all based on one design connected to a data table. Now we're not quite finished. This is just a preview so you can actually see what it, it does. This icon right here is going to allow us to save our merged files. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. I'm going to let you explore uh, with the options on your own. We're going to do a simple all records merge right now and we're going to go ahead and click on OK. And what this is going to do is generate a new file based on all of our records and it's going to give us a document, uh, show us any errors of overset text. And now if I scroll down, I can see I've created all of these different designs in a very short amount of time.
So I could send these off to be printed and I would be all set for my mailer. Now this is an excellent way to communicate to your clients and get them a little bit more interested in your designs by making the design customized for them while not overtaxing your design department and taking too much time on creating individual designs. So I hope you found this video helpful. There are two other videos you may be interested in. Uh, one is how to create a data merge inside of Photoshop and the other is how to set up your data table for a data merge. Now I mentioned earlier I would demonstrate a couple of the differences between InDesign uh, data merge and Photoshop data merge. In InDesign data merge you can create um, large bodies of text and replace a word in the middle of the text um, which is a very powerful thing. Inside of Photoshop you can't do that very easily. Inside of Photoshop when you're changing uh, the design you actually are changing a layer. So you'd have to create a special layer uh, for something to change. For example, right here I have a layer called salutation, which changes right there. But if I wanted a word right in the middle, it would be harder because it wouldn't adjust the spacing for me. It wouldn't keep uh, the flow going. So that's one advantage to using InDesign. One advantage to using Photoshop is you have a little bit more freedom with your designs. For example, right here you can see my text it's been uh, distorted or reshaped uh, and it's a lot easier to do this inside of Photoshop or to add more effects inside of Photoshop whereas in InDesign you're a little bit more limited on the designs that you can do. So those are just some of the differences between using Photoshop uh, for data merge or for using InDesign for data merge. Both are very powerful tools and I recommend you experiment with them. Do a simple data merge first and then build up to adding uh, multiple uh, changes, maybe having a whole array of colors that you change in your design or having even the different pictures. Maybe you're sending images out to people in different regions of the country and you want to specialize your mailings for each region. You can do that very easily using data merge. Well, I hope this has been beneficial. Have a great day.